So I've got an idea, right? There is a new invasive species here in the Chesapeake Bay. It's actually not new. It's been here since the 70s. The Virginia Department of Natural Resources actually introduced this fish as a sport fish and it never really caught on and then the fish spread through the entire Chesapeake Bay. I mean, every corner from Cape Charles to the Susquehanna River, these fish have taken over. They are incredibly destructive to the environment and there is a ton of them. Even the state is trying to get fishermen to switch over to catching them. I think I'm gonna go try to catch some. We're gonna call this fish bay salmon because I tell you what, it's delicious. I've had it about every single way. It's never been bad. It's super versatile, really clean tasting fish. It's not fishy at all. It's very similar, I would think, to salmon in terms of practicality. I happen to have a big boat set up for ground fishing. So here's my plan. I'm gonna put together some hooks. I got some crab pot line. I'm gonna make some long lines. I'm gonna go try to target this species of fish in areas that nobody targets them. Just like crabs, everybody thinks they're scavengers. They're a little picky. There's a way to catch them and then there's a way to catch enough to make a living. I'm trying to figure out how to catch enough to make a living. The first step is to make some of these leaders here. I'm gonna put some snap clips on them and I'm gonna fish them on a long line with circle hooks like this, baited with pieces of cut fish. Some chunks of LY here. We're gonna see how that works. Now listen, I don't know anything about catching these fish. Actually, that's not true. I know very little about catching these fish, at least on a commercial scale. We do it for fun because they taste great. They're tons of fun to catch and there's a lot of them out there. You gotta start somewhere. So I'm just taking a little bit of knowledge I have about the fish, how they work, and I'm gonna try something. You don't know unless you try. So I'm taking some 150 pound monofilament here and these little crimps. I have a size eight circle hook putting it through there like that take your crimping pliers and then crimp it just like that that's a knot that will never come undone hopefully not with these fish this little snap gear clip is just like what i use for a crab pot but it's smaller and it's going to clip onto the main line with this leader and hook now i don't know if this is what they use i've seen other long line boats use very similar setups like this uh, and it was cheap and is relatively easy to do sometimes especially when it comes to fishing things that you think are completely foolproof don't work for no apparent reason except for the fish just don't like it so this gear is relatively beefy and maybe a little bit overkill for these fish but they can grow up to a hundred pounds here in the chesapeake bay which is far larger than any other fish in the bay even rockfish these fish are truly at the top of the food chain, which is part of the problem. They do not discriminate and they eat everything that's in their path. Crabs, rockfish, soft crabs, white perch, anything that swims their way can and will fit in their mouth. So a big part of the reason I'm so interested in this particular fish is because there's very little rules and regulations surrounding this fish and there's very little competition in the fishery. There's reasons for that like there's not a ton of market for it, but I think that's just because not a lot of people know too much about this fish. In my opinion, most similar to salmon. That's why we're calling it a bay salmon. And no, this fish is not actually a salmon, but in the UK, all the fish and chips are a fish called a dogfish. And on every menu, it's referred to as a rock salmon. Dogfish were also considered a pest fish for a long time and fishermen had a hard time dealing with them, much less wanted to catch them until people created a market for it. And now it's a huge fishery with tons of people in it and it's super sustainable, just like I think this fish could be. I really think there could be a market for this fish. I really wanna sell it at my crab stand and to local restaurants. Let's test my work. Make sure they're gonna hold these potentially 100 pound fish. Oh boy. That's not ideal. I just realized that all last night I did like a hundred and some of these hooks. And I was using the wrong crimp and I under crimped like all of these hooks. 
That is a bummer. This takes a long time. Guess we're recrimping. These are size one. I was using 1.5 to two on the crimper. Oh, that's all right. I only have like about a hundred here to redo, which is pretty much everyone I've done so far. I didn't notice this tangled mess of all these lines. I have this old paint tank for painting crab pots and look at that. Perfect height, hook stays right there, doesn't get tangled. You put hundreds in that thing. That's perfect. So, so far I haven't done so well because all the hooks I made and put in this box are in a giant tangled mess and all the crimps that I crimped, I crimped incorrectly. So the way it's going so far, I think the rest of this is gonna go really well. All right, finally got that mess undone. See if she starts. All right, here we go, setting our line. So the basic rundown is we have this hawk to this line that goes to this anchor. It also gets clipped to the main line. We get a sash weight, clip it to that line. And then the line's gonna come off of that spool. And then as it's going out the back, we're gonna clip these clips onto the main line. Beyond that, I have no plan. And I don't know what I'm doing. What just happened there, one of my absolute worst nightmares, where Matt was setting it out, the line got wrapped around his hand around the rubber on the gloves, and it got caught. Thank goodness the hook never got in his hand, and if we were not paying attention or something and kept moving, that hook could have gotten his hand, he could have gone overboard. Oh my gosh, I about had a heart attack. That's a captain's absolute worst nightmare. We joke about it, but we do try to do everything as safely as possible, because we do not want to die doing this stuff. I mean, it was our first time ever doing it. So I'm not glad it happened, but now I know what we can do to try to prevent that from happening ever again. We got let off with the easiest warning ever right there. And look at that. It busted my uh, crimp that I didn't do right. Imagine that. Thank goodness I crimped them wrong. Wow, crazy. First line out, see what it does. We're about to find out how many catfish are really down there because we just set this line like an hour ago and we're gonna pull it just because I'm really curious. So the catfishing actually worked a lot better than I was expecting, and I'm hoping that I can use this to supplement my income 
in the winter and spring months before crabbing season. And I think I might even be able to get Jimmy's Famous Seafood and a couple other restaurants to carry this catfish on their menu. Fingers crossed, but this went way better than expected, which doesn't usually happen in my world.